Uh, good evening, everybody. It's exactly half past six. Welcome. Um, the usual notices apply. Um, I'll just wait for Councillor Miller to finish his phone call. So there are no fire alarms scheduled for. Th there are no fire alarms scheduled for this evening. Therefore, if the alarm sounds, please evacuate the building immediately. The fire exits are located at the rear and the side of the room. Go down the stairs and meet in the War Memorial Park, please. Don't forget the meeting is webcast and I've just been told it's working. And can we all make sure our phones are turned to silent at least, um, if not off? I've no idea which is which on there. There we go. That's it. Are there any apologies for absence? Apart from Councillor Watts. Nope. Thank you. Uh, declaration of interest. I'm assuming none. Good. Minutes of the meeting held on the 12th of January. Um, we're not going to get those until the 8th of March, although um, Steph has actually done some sterling work and they've been produced, so um, we could have had them tonight, couldn't we? Really? Uh, we wouldn't have had seven days. Yeah. So, um, item five, proposal for the policy and budget framework. Um, Councillor Isaac is going to give us a presentation, and he's got his officers, welcome both, one's hiding in the back, um, presumably to support him. Because this is a long paper, if you want to raise any question on any part of it, can you preface that with the page that it's on to make everything easier, particularly for uh, people answering the questions rather than me? Are we all happy with that? Good, thank you. Uh, Councillor Isaac, over to you. <clears throat> uh, thank you, Chairman, and uh, good evening, Councillors. Um, my uh, recollection is that um, we uh, that I, I, I presented to you on the uh, budget pr uh, proposals as they were um, at the time of the last scrutiny committee meeting, which was on the 23rd of November, and I th that we, we, we knew that there was going to be. Um, an announcement on the <coughs> local government finance uh, settlement proposals uh, from uh, the minister um, after that. Um, that. That statement was issued on the 17th of December and, and my understanding is that uh, tonight I'm updating you on the changes that uh, were uh, <coughs> announced in that um, settlement and the impact that it's had on the budget proposals correct? Um, well, I expect so. Is the, is the rest of the committee happy with that? Yeah? Then you're ready to go, John. Just to ensure there's no misunderstanding later, we still have the right to ask any questions of any kind on the paper. Absolutely. Thank you. Fine. Good. I just didn't want to go over the, the same ground again. Uh, <laughs> no, in response to questions, I'm quite happy to. Um, but um, just, just a, a bit of um, <clears throat> background, uh, really, uh, that, that, that um, what the minister, Greg Clark, said uh, in his statement in, in December is that um, uh, with this uh, <clears throat> settlement for uh, local government, uh, he, he was uh, saying that more savings are uh, required uh, from uh, local government um, to help bring down the deficit. Um, he said that um, in 2010, um, councils across England and Wales were 80% dependent on central government grants. By 2020, he's saying that, uh, that, that uh, we will be 100% funded by council tax, business rates, and other local revenues. So I just thought that was useful to give you some I a sort of idea of the direction of travel as far as the government's con concern. And that involves 100% um, a, a retention, uh, retention of business rates, or business rates growth anyway, uh, and um, a, a reallocation to councils with social care responsibilities, uh, which typically is um, uh, the unitaries uh, or the county councils, though, of course, we are we do have um, uh, 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 social care responsibilities, as we know, uh, as we know full well. So, if I can 
return to the presentation. Okay, it's this one here. Right. Okay. Well, I can't sleep, can I? Because <laughs> they haven't fixed the bloody... Ah. Can you, can you turn the telly around? Is it on there? Sorry about that, Chairman. It's unforgivable. If I thought it was your fault, it would be unforgivable. <laughs> Since I know it's not. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry? Can you read it from there? No, it's basically that way. Ah. Bring it forward. Bring it forward. <laughs> they go that funny colour when they move, don't they, Big Teddy? <laughs> Sorry. Yes, please. Yes. Right, problem now solved. <laughs> Thank you very much. <laughs> I can go less for <laughs> <laughs> Councillor Isaac, please carry on. Thank you, Chairman. Uh, so just by way of introduction, um, the context in which um, the budget proposals um, uh, are, are um, presented, um, they are supporting delivery of, uh, of our council plan and within the medium-term financial strategy framework, which uh, takes us through to 2019, 2020. Yeah. Um, and um, uh, in preparing the budget proposals, uh, we, we've uh, taken, taken account of um, principal council plan themes, such as preparing for controlled and sustainable growth, improving a residents' quality of life, and supporting those who, who, need, uh, who need it. Um, and uh, remaining uh, a, an organisation that is capable of, uh, of continuing to deliver change. So, now to the, the sort of headlines of the um, government's announcement uh, in December. Um, the, the key areas, firstly, uh, the revenue support grant. Um, they are giving us at least the certainty of a four-year four settlement, indicative settlement, um, but um, with a steeper reduction than we had forecast um, the last time we, uh, we met you. So it's uh, £500,000 less than we, uh, than we had in the um, F MTFS previously. The account has now been taken of the amount raised locally from, uh, from, from council tax, um, and that means that they are increasing the um, grant reductions for councils with higher tax bases, uh, such as uh, Basingstoke and Dean. And if you want an explanation of the technical side of that, um, but essentially um, uh, councils with high, ta high tax bases are... are, are um, uh, receiving less as a result of these, of these proposals. So um, in 2016-17, this budget year that we're talking about, uh, we're going to get £118,000 less in grant than we forecast in the MTFS. So that means that we had forecast 2.22 million, and it's reduced to 1.42 million. Um, <clears throat> An innovation from the, uh, from, from the uh, minister is the idea of negative rate support grant, um, which is an interesting concept. Um, and uh, uh, the, 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 our calculations um, 
show that uh, by 2019 stroke 20, if these proposals are in fact voted through in Parliament, which of course may not be the case, um, we as Basingstoke and Dean um, would um, be paying the government um, something in the order of £171,000. So it's negative rate support grant. Um, now, uh, Kevin J. Chris can explain um, the intricacies of that, um, uh, how that is calculated. Um, he has explained it to me, and uh, I'm still none the wiser. Um, but I do know that the outcome of it would be a negative sum. Uh, also, on, on the positive side, um, the Minister said that local government as a whole will retain 100% of business rates, um, but what goes with that uh, by 2020 will be new responsibilities that they're putting on us. Um, and I suspect that uh, it will be retention of future growth from 2020 rather than um, us being in the happy position of, um, of having – it certainly won't be the case that we, 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 we will be um, – pocketing all the um, uh, business rates that we generate in the borough. Um, <clears throat> in terms of council tax, um, uh, a new change is that um, for councils such as our own, district councils with a low council tax, he's now allowing us to increase uh, council tax uh, by up to five pounds without um, needing to go five pounds per, band, per annum per band D property without going to a referendum. So he's giving us more tax raising policy uh, uh, possibilities. Um, but for the first time, um, we, there is no there is no uh, council tax freeze grant. I think for the last four years, uh, we've we've been rewarded with a with a with a freeze grant. Uh, because we have taken the decision not to increase our council tax. So that's all gone. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> Thank you, Ian. Um, uh, and also, um, on this slide, the, the, there is now something called a 2% social care premium, um, which is um, a, 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 a premium that uh, councils with adult social care responsibilities can charge. Uh, as part of uh, their, their uh, increases in council tax. I don't think that applies to us. No. Right. Okay. No. No. Right. right. Um, uh, part two of this uh, announcement in uh, December from the government uh, relates to new, ho new homes bonus. Um, the scheme is unchanged for 2016-17. I think, generally speaking, he's um, uh, committed to... Uh, the new homes bonus indefinitely, but he's going to be uh, consulting um, on uh, what uh, uh, what form it should take in, in future years. But it's unchanged for 2016-17, uh, and our grant has, uh, is, is higher than we were anticipating at £592,000 more, so we're getting a grant of £5.3 million. So that's the good news. Um, but um, w looking down the track, um, there's a consultation on the scheme um, from 2017-18, and uh, it's clear that the government, uh, at least at present, is looking for significant savings in the new homes bonus, um, something to the tune of two-thirds of the value of the new homes bonus. Um, so savings of 800 million, uh, we calculate, across, across England and Wales. Um, they will, uh, you, you'll remember that New Homes Bonus has, has to date been paid um, over a period of six years for every new house that's, that, that's, that's brought into, um, uh, into use. Uh, they're, they're talking now about reducing that to four years. Um, and, then, and they're talking about withholding grant if uh, a council has no local plan or if um, a house has only um, been delivered um, following a planning appeal. So they're toughening up all round. And then finally, they're, they're um, also um, not giving you any credit um, for the normal increases that take place in housing growth uh, in your borough uh, or your area. Um, so again, that's quite complicated, isn't it? But um, you, you can get the sort of thrust of it. Um, so in, the, in our budget, we are assuming that um, the first £600,000 
of new homes bonus um, will uh, be, be used for uh, revenues um, and that's consistent with the policy that we uh, announced before December. Just uh, a, a few um, of the uh, key points in relation to our, our own budget changes for 2016-17. Um, in terms of expenditure, we are uh, forecasting pay and price inflation of £560,000. Uh, a large element of that is accounted for by the salary increase at 1% for staff, which uh, will amount to a cost of £228,000. Um, then also other cost pressures of around about a million pounds, uh, not least 350 odd thousand pounds um, in additional uh, in, uh, national insurance costs. And then uh, there are cabinet proposals uh, for 1617 uh, to, um, uh, to, to uh, make further investments in priorities such as top of the town, transport strategy for the southwest of Basingstoke, the alternative investment strategy, a Basingstoke festival coordinator, um, work at East Rock Park, and also, very importantly, um, investing in uh, supporting people and um, doing, our, doing our best as a borough to um, help those who are at risk of um, homelessness. Um, on, income, on, the, on the income side, um, because of the prevailing lower interest rates in the, in, in the, in the marketplace, we're assuming that our uh, haul of um, income uh, will, will be on, on our money in the, in, the, uh, <coughs> in the money markets will be about £300,000 less. Um, we are saying that uh, because of business rates growth, there will be an additional uh, business rates income of about £231,000. And uh, as a result of increasing fees and uh, additional uh, planning uh, fee, uh, fee, fees because of um, more activity in the housing market, we're expecting uh, service income to increase by uh, £760,000. Um, as ever, uh, we have uh, the need for uh, to need for to achieve further uh, efficiency and budget savings. Um, we are targeting seven hundred thirty-four thousand pounds in uh, budget year sixteen seventeen. So this is this is accounted for by uh, such items as increased vacancy allowances. Uh, transportation savings, uh, insurance cost savings. Um, other items, uh, reductions in government grants, well that's the uh, rate support grant that I've talked about uh, principally, but also housing benefit administration grant. Um, secondly, uh, we are, as you know, proposing to increase council tax by uh, two pounds per annum per DAT band D property, and that will uh, raise £124,000 uh, in 1617. Um, we, because we have more houses, our, our council tax base is increasing, so that will generate about £115,000. Uh, we're anticipating that rents from the property portfolio will increase, so that we, we, will, um, we will gain another £160,000 from that. And um, uh, we also have uh, proposed net use of reserves um, for funding the uh, capital program and the capital priorities uh, one-off items that I referred to earlier. Uh, then if, as far as the main reserve changes are concerned, um, we, we're um, <clears throat> proposing an allocation of uh, 5.283 million uh, uh, fr f uh, uh, to, uh, uh, from, from, new from New Homes Bonus. Um, I've referred to funding new priorities, so that's, that's the 1.465 million there. Um, drawing down funding uh, to take forward the uh, development of Many Down, which is moving forward uh, 
well at the moment um, uh, from the Mendydown Reserve of £643,000. Um, I, I said that uh, there's a for first call on the new homes bonus for, for our revenue budget of £600,000, so that's uh, referred to there. And transfer from the Strategic Capital Reserve to the Stability and Resilience Reserve of 1.25 million. What we're doing is we're topping up the Stability Reserve because of all the uncertainties that we face, uh, both in terms of what's, what, what's happening with uh, with our investments in the marketplace and the and the funding that we're getting from from, from government. Um, and then the funding uh, capital program. Uh, 4.691 million. We are, we are due to spend 12 million pounds in 1617 on our capital programme, and so um, 4.7 million of it is coming from the revenue reserve for capital. The rest of it will come from Section 106 and capital receipts. Looking at the uh, cabinet's proposals, uh, as I've I've re referred uh, to previously, after five years of freezing council tax, we're, we're obliged, um, because of the pressures that we're under, to increase council tax uh, by 1.9%, which is £2 per, per annum per bandy property. And it's also worth noting here that, uh, that because we are uh, um, facing something in the order of a £7 to £8 million pound structural deficit, in our uh, over the medium term financial s uh, strategy period we are planning there's a planning assumption now that we we're looking to, uh, to take the opportunity and the assumption that government is making that we will be increasing our council tax in the years beyond by five pounds uh, per annum per bandy property um, uh, we have referred to the uh, revenue allocations the the, the cabinet priorities um, also, um, we've, um, we're providing for free car parking to be increased in, in the top of the town from half an hour to one hour, and I'm pleased to say that we've also managed to um, uh, take uh, on board the, um, the um, uh, helpful uh, suggestion from councillor, um, uh, from my councillor here. Um, Cousin. Yes, that's right. Yeah, well, I'm I'm having to remember a lot tonight, actually. But thank you for putting me right there, <laughs> Councillor Cousins. How know. could I? How could I possibly? Oh, okay. Yes. Yes. Absolutely. Yes. Yes. You're Cal having to remember, even though you've got notes. <laughs> <laughs> Councillor um, we are providing for a general one percent increase in fees and charges, and um, uh, the the. Uh, uh, budget proposals in relation to the new homes bonus are that um, we will be um, using we're support, supporting our revenue uh, with with the first six hundred thousand pounds as I've mentioned before which is twenty five percent allocating fifty five percent to the strategic capital reserve and in, uh, in, uh, and and twenty percent um, will be applied to the local infrastructure fund. Uh, when we last met, I think we were talking in terms of a 5% uh, allocation to the local infrastructure fund. So we have taken on board some of the comments that we've uh, received, uh, not least um, from my colleague, Councillor Bound, who um, I can actually see your name there, so I don't know. <laughs> no, that wouldn't have been a problem. <laughs> right, then just moving on to the uh, capital proposals. Um, uh, the new capital allocations uh, that, that, that uh, the Cabinet is proposing uh, total 16.271 million, and uh, these cover uh, that list there, which you can all read for yourselves, I think. So it's all pretty clear. Uh, the rolling programmes uh, of 2.7 million, that's parking and access schemes, uh, ICT, uh, vehicles and play areas and, and such. So to finish, um, that sort of sets out the budget strategy f over uh, across the um, MTFS. Um, and shows how we're proposing to balance our budgets um, across the, the, uh, that, that, that period. So um, I, I would um, 
I'd like to recommend the to um, colleagues tonight that I think we've got we've got um, uh, uh, we, we, we've we've got robust finances. Um, we are able to uh, produce what we have to do, which is a balanced budget, and yet we're still able to um, maintain and, in some cases, improve, increase, extend the services that we're offering to our residents. Which I think. Uh, so I'd like to congratulate the officers for their for their good work on this at a time when many other councils are uh, facing enormous difficulties because of these uh, changes and I think it's testament to the uh, careful uh, financial management that has gone on this in this council over many years thank you councillor Isaac um, I think it's sensible we move to a period of questions now um, here we go I've got uh, councillor uh, what's his name, Katie? Councillor, um, uh, Councillor Miller, yeah, and um, Councillor Cousins. I knew that one already. So, Councillor Keating. Thank, thank you, Chair. Uh, Councillor Keating is my name. Um, thank you very much, Councillor. Um, we're talking about the finances over the next four or five years for this council. And we're facing a huge uncertainty in relation to the construction and design of local government in, in Hampshire. We have proposals for a greater Hampshire authority, which would, of course, uh, include us acquiring social care costs if, if we're part of that greater Hampshire authority. That's one huge element of uncertainty. In addition, to the other huge element of uncertainty is that the government is reported to have not yet addressed the issue of how the business rate funding arrangement will apply to local government. Now, we, we know the, f the headline words, but we don't know any of the detailed facts. So we're currently planning against the government's proposals to eliminate rate support grant and replace it with something which is called business rate retention with no plan, with no detail. So those two great uncertainties lead me to conclude that planning for the next four years without those uh, elements being addressed is going to be a huge issue for us all collectively. Could you uh, please write an essay to that effect? <laughs> Do you want to answer each question as we go? Or? Yeah, I'm happy to. Good. Um, thank you, Councillor Keating. Um, uh, yes, I, I think that the, it, the, the general picture is one of of, um, uh, of uncertainty, and and that is is, is really a, a feature of um, all the the um, uh, uh, savings that that um, uh, uh, is, are being made and and, and required across uh, across government. And so we 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 we, we can't be um, uh, we, we we can't be uh, outside of that. Um, I suppose that uh, one of the, th we, 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 the, 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 the idea of, uh, of, of combined authorities, um, one of the benefits of that, um, I'm, I would be expecting, would be that it would give us greater independence and, and, less, and less, less reliance on central government. We would be more able to make our own decisions. And um, uh, sure, there will be, uh, th 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 there are, um, as part of that, we will be becoming more involved in um, those uh, social so adult social care responsibilities, but at least at that point we'll have a we'll have a we'll be at the table, so we'll be able to influence things in a way. I think so many um, on so many occasions one hears a lot of frustration uh, being expressed in this council about um, about our own residents who 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 who, who we're not able to, um, to, to 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 assist because it's somebody else's responsibility. Um, I suppose I, I'm going to turn to. Uh, Kevin Jaquist, if I may, on, on, the, on the business rates uh, uh, question, because I think it's such a highly technical one that it would be better 
you get a better answer from Kevin, or at least I hope, uh, I hope you will. Yeah, anyway. Well, I, I, I think, uh, Chair, all, all I can say really is, is, is agree with Councillor Keating in that the main elements of the change to the business rate scheme are not, are not known. Um, as I understand it, DCLG will be consulting on a, a number of streams uh, in the sort of March onwards. Uh, so there will be detailed consultation with local government as a whole on, and very specific consultation on what that involves. But I, I would uh, concur with the, the view that it is very uncertain and, and the portfolio holder has said that as well and that is certainly the case. All we know really is a, a couple of sentences in terms of the intention for the scheme which is that local government as a whole, and I think that's important, it's not individual councils, it's local government as a whole, would be, would be able to retain 100% of business rates, but we also know that that will come with additional responsibilities. We don't know which responsibilities yet. Uh, so I think I'm agreeing with Councillor Keating around the uncertainty. I suppose, sorry. Mr. Mayor Chair, uh, looking at the <coughs> proposed restructuring of local government locally, i.e. Hampshire-wide type of stuff. Uh, we, county council generally have the legal responsibility to provide services, which is social care plus. Uh, and some county councils are currently projecting forward that they will have to go bust because the obligation to provide a service continues but the ability to pay to provide the service uh, is at risk, high risk. And, and for us to buy into that scenario suggests to me that oh, we might be at the table, but we'd be writing the checks. You know, so, so that causes me a difficulty. Uh, and I'm not surprised at the answer, because the, the answer is there is uncertainty. And it's huge uncertainty. And... Uh, going on from year to year without acknowledging that I think causes a huge element of financial instability in the long term. Because whilst we have reserves now and whilst we can use the reserves now and whilst we have the rate support grant coming in plus the new home bonus grant coming in we can we can moderate the impact of the cuts. But that can't go on. That will have to be changed in one form or another. But thank you for that. Uh, I've got some more questions, but I'll leave someone else to take the floor for now, if I may. I just make the point that um, central government does write the rules. And, uh, yes, I know, but, yeah. and, uh, but um, the, the, the direction of travel of, of, the, of, of, of the government uh, is uh, they, they're saying is in in in, uh, in the direction of um, more autonomy um, in terms of decision making and the financing by local government. So if we can if we can if we can get to that point, I think that's that that would be uh, uh, something worth having. Um, obviously, there's a lot of work to be done there. Um, the I think that the point you make about this council writing the checks is 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 one that's worth um, uh, being al alert to, uh, and that's why it's very important that in any in any agreement that is reached um, on a co combined authority that this council is no worse off than it would otherwise have been. Uh, yeah. Thank you, Councillor uh, Councillor Miller. Thank you, Chair. <coughs> I don't think these are huge issues. Uh, I noticed on the slides there's two questions, two short ones. Interest income is reduced by 300k. Why, when interest rates haven't moved for over six years? Okay, do the two things. One, it's around what the assumptions are in the base budget. So we already assumed that previously the interest rates would be higher than they proved to be. So that's one factor. So interest, so it's so we don't necessarily we make an assumption in the budget about where interest rates will be. So we're starting from a, a position that we haven't been achieving over the last couple of years. So part of the reduction is to reflect the fact that interest rates have remained low and they haven't moved 
in the way that um, forecasters and, and ourselves were expecting them to move, so they've stayed lower longer. That's one factor. But probably the biggest factor is the fact that the council has a significant proportion of its um, resources invested longer term for fixed terms, and those are maturing each year. In the past, we would have been able to take the maturing amounts, put them out at a higher rate, that was the strategy, uh, and keep that rate you know, declining but slowing the decline. Where we are on that, and, and on average, we would have investments probably that had, that, largely in gilts, that had an average life of, say, around about seven, six, seven years. We're now under two years in terms of the average life of the investment in the portfolio. So there's more money coming back. There isn't anywhere to, uh, to put it to earn enhanced returns, and certainly not the returns that we were getting when we first took the investments out six, seven, eight years ago. Thank you, Chair. Thank, Thank you very much. That makes sense. Just the second one, Chair, if I may. Yeah. Um, you had a slide on there of movement of monies to and from reserves, I think, was the title at the top. Uh, and you got many down at £643,000. £643, uh, is that to or from? Because we got a grant from DCLG to kickstart the studies required for many down. Uh, you know, you didn't put a to or from on the bullet points that went down the page. Somewhere in, somewhere out. I, I don't know which was which. It's, it's, it's money taken from the reserve to, um, to be used to um, take forward our master planning. It's not. It's separate from the DCLG studies. This is this is this is the money that we're using to enable us to get to a point that we can put a planning application in in, in the autumn of, uh, of, uh, of this year. Thank you. Master planning, that's uh, not a word I've heard recently. Councillor Cousins. Thank you, Chair, and thank you, Portfolio Holder, for the presentation tonight and the officers for compiling it. Um, I feel somewhat in two minds whether it's a good thing or a bad thing that I've contributed to a Tory budget. <laughs> um, but hey-ho, um, I've got a couple of questions, if I may, Chair. First of all, starting on page 7 of 118, paragraph 3.1.7, which talks about the um, formal resolution of council tax charges and the um, other major preceptors. Obviously, we know what we're planning to do. Have we had any indication yet of what the other major preceptors are intending to do? I'm, I'm advised that we've heard uh, we, we've had no update on what the other preceptors are going to do, and um, as to contributing to a conservative budget, I would just say to you, Councillor Cousins, that doesn't it doesn't this demonstrate that what the benefits are of constructive engagement? Because we do listen. Very true, very true. Um, but thank you very much for your answer as well, that there's no information yet. That's fine. Uh, moving on to page 14 of 118, uh, please. Um, paragraph 6.16.1, which are the other specific grants. It says that, um, that there is a reduction of 161. Is that because those grants are no longer available or we are no longer applying for those grants? I'm, I'm informed that um, those grants are no, are no longer available. They were one-offs from government. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Uh, oh, oh, sorry. Uh, that's okay. I've only got two more questions for, for now, anyway. Um, page uh, 100 of 118, and specifically in relation to... Uh, fees and charges regarding the market stalls. Uh, I note there's a new charge for electricity use and there is an 8.7% increase on the um, weekly fee per linear foot. Have there been any um, market, have there been any impact studies into what those charges would mean to the new marketplace? 
No, I think we've taken a view on this, and, and, the, and my recollection is that the, the, these charges have not been increased for some uh, considerable period of time, uh, and I've not had any feedback uh, from anyone to suggest that, um, uh, that, that, that uh, the, these are, uh, are causing uh, issues. Chair, the, uh, chair, I'm the chair. Um, Councillor Isaac, that these charges have not been made before. I think that's the point. They're new charges applicable in 2015-16. Well, okay. Um, and one final question, if I may, on page 106 of 118. Um, could you explain? Uh, 106 of 118, and I'm looking at the outdoor facilities and sport pitch bookings. Um, could you explain to me, please, why the junior and educational uh, pitches and facilities are increasing more than the adults, please? I can't. Th th these are re real points of detail, and I would be very happy to come back to you um, and give you a, a, a written answer on that, but um, it's not something that I can give you a, an, a, an immediate answer to. So, a written answer? Yeah. Yeah, thank you. Councillor Cousins, is that you done for the moment? For now. Thank, thank you. you. Councillor Frost? If I may, Chair, I'll come, I'll come back... Just a second. I'll come back to Councillor Cousins on the electricity uh, for the market stalls because, again, that's something that I haven't got my fingertips. Is it okay to move on? Thank you. Councillor Frost. <laughs> Absolutely. Thank you, Chair. I'd just like to say that despite the, the fact that we're, we are entering a, a period of, uh, of great uncertainty, I think that uh, just an average of uh, an increase of £2 per, per bandy household, residents will still be getting excellent value for money from this council and with the increased level of investment in the, in the borough's proof of this. But I know that this was recently put out to consultation, and I just wonder if you could possibly update us as to the results of that, please. My, my uh, recollection is that um, we, we got uh, two um, responses which were, which were broadly positive, um, uh, but, but um, more than that, um, I, I don't, don't think we got anything further, do we? But could you add to that? Uh, on page 25 of 118, there is a, a, a summary. I don't think it answers the council's specific point, uh, but it, it certainly says that generally there are 17 responses to the consultation. Uh, and, it, and that uh, paragraph 19.6 sort of highlights some of the areas that were responded to. Thank you. Thank you, Chair. Welcome. Thank you. Um, Councillor Tilbury. Councillor Keating. Thank you, Chair. Um, first question is on page 13 of 118, 6.12.4 uh, dot uh, dot out there, regarding the new homes bonus figures there. Um, do you, are these cumulative figures? Because they seem... The, um, the last one is based on 448 houses. Of course, these are based, the, you get paid the money for six years, but it suggests, is that, there? that's the only houses, what we've got left in the six-year supply, if you like, or is that per per year? Because then I, I, you know, I looked at it, I meant to phone Philip about it earlier, but I'm in a busy day fixing the wife's car. <laughs> but it does seem a bit of a, the numbers do seem a bit odd there to me. Each of those numbers is, uh, reflects the um, houses that were delivered that year and for which you're getting rate support grant currently for six years. New homes bonus, sorry. Yeah. 
Uh, the other question is, is on page 39 of 118, I noticed the, the number of full-time equivalent staff seems to, is forecast to go up by 10 roughly next year, from 5, 5, or 5, 5 6, 3 to say 5, 7, 4, which seems quite a lot. Also, kind of noticing that's about how many staff we had when we used to have the housing department, and we got rid of about 140 people then. <laughs> so we, they seem to have all sneaked back in the door somewhere. But it does seem a bit odd to me because I think I got the impression that we've sort of quite lost quite a staff. We've done a rationalisation and such like, but we actually seem to have more staff than we had before, which does seem a bit odd. Could you explain? No, it's, it's a good, good point to raise, uh, and it's largely accounted for um, by um, the increasing work we're doing in shared services with other with other boroughs. <coughs> such as, well, it says here, shared services, the changes that they account for 5.5 .5 of, the, of the... And, of course, um, this council is involved uh, increasingly in some, in some uh, very major investments, uh, and uh, if we're going to be able to, to make sure that we um, uh, manage those investments and get, and get the best advice, then we have to hire the right staff, and uh, that's also taken... That's also been uh, reflected in. Uh, you, you remember, I think, the council before last, where we were. There was uh, uh, appointments that were referred to. Okay, uh, Councillor Keating, then, please. Thank you, Chair. My name is Councillor Keating. Um, if you look at page 46 of 118, under the heading on that page is Revenue Priority Allocation, the penultimate item at the bottom, at the bottom of that page talks about the best part of a half and a quarter of a million pounds to undertake feasibility of parking. Now, we know that the top-of-town proposals include, currently, a multi-storey car park uh, opposite Jacob, Jacob's Yard, top-of-town. And that's a, that's a new concept for Basingstoke in terms of the council. The council doesn't have any multi-storey car parks. The only multi-storey car parks are in Festival Place. Um, I've been talking for years about the hungry, the, 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 the acreage hungry idea of parking on, on flat ground. It, it seems crazy to me that the, the central uh, central park uh, we're using, you know, acres of land just to park cars. Now. What I don't understand is why, why we need anybody to be hired as a consultant to tell us what we need to do with parking. We've been dealing with parking in Basingstoke within the Borough Council for, what, 14,000 generations? We have restructured the town centre more than once in the last 50 years. We've still got most of the council car parking on flat ground. We've now got to a whole new idea, brand new one, promoted by Councillor Keating for the last 10 years of a multi-storey car park using better facilities and land availability. Uh, why couldn't we just simply save the quarter of a million pound on feasibility and just agree to where we have flat car parking in the council, that we'll put some multi-storey car parks there, other places as well. Now, there's your £225,000 saved, and we could just get on with redeveloping the town. I mean, it really is a nightmare scenario to say, oh, we want a feasibility study. We'll have to get a consultant, you know, and they're very expensive for car parking. It's crazy. Could you explain, please? I'll do my best, Councillor Keating, on that. Um, well, I, I'm, I'm, I'm glad that we, we are um, 
uh, our thinking is the same in, in, in terms of the, the potential benefits of um, multi-story car parks um, because um, one of the uh, benefits of this, as you, as you quite, be, quite, uh, uh, quite rightly um, described, is that um, is a, is it makes better use of, of the land. And um, that would enable us to free up sites potentially for other uses, um, particularly housing. And that's really um, that's, that, that's the, the uh, thrust of what's being discussed at the moment um, for um, Central Car Park. Uh, site. Uh, as to um, uh, consultants, well, um, I, 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 I would like to suggest to you that if we're going to do this well, uh, we, we do need to, uh, and, we, and we're going to have a, a multi-story car park that, that looks, that, that fits in with the overall uh, streets scene and, and respects what we've got at, uh, gen uh, we, we, we've got at the top of the town, we, need, we do need to hire consultants such as architects. Uh, and that's, the, the, that's, so, so th that's uh, where some of it, uh, where some of the expenditure has gone. Also, we, we, uh, we, need to, we need to bring in people who can advise us on the, uh, on the viability of the scheme, and what, what, um, uh, uh, what the, uh, the, the costs of the car parking will be, what the lightly realizable um, value of the apartments that might be built on another site are, are, are going to be. So, um, uh, I think it would be very unwise in, in, in something that, that's going to amount to a multi-million pound scheme if it, if, if, it, if it proceeds for us to be doing this um, uh, ourselves and I think we do need to bring in and, and have good external advice and, I, and from what I've seen uh, we have got that and, uh, and I think it's, um, it's valuable. Having said that, as always we need to keep a very close eye on, uh, on what these consultants are charging us. Uh, are you all right with that? No. You're losing the wheel to the bell. Councillor Cousins. Thank you, Chair. Uh, staying on page um, 46 of 118, uh, the very bottom one, transport strategy, which is half a million pounds. Um, could you explain how that figure has been uh, concluded at? Um, because it, I don't know, just off the bat, it seems a little high. Also, sort of further to that, have we got any kind of expertise within the council that we could draw upon? And as we aren't the transport authority, are we solely funding this, or are Hampshire, who are the transport authority, actually putting some money forward? And if not, surely we should be asking them to fund this. Uh, it, it, it is, as my understanding, is that it's a major piece of work for the future. Um, it's not covered within the CLG funding, um, but I would need to come back to you um, with a breakdown of how those costs have been, uh, have been arrived at. Again, I have not, not something I'm directly dealing with, and therefore I'd need to, get to uh, uh, come back to you. So that's a third, third uh, um, written answer for you, Councillor Cousins. I'd, I'd just I'd like to reinforce that. I mean, I've worked at Surrey County Council and was involved in travel plans. County councils do have experts, and if they don't have them at Hampshire, I know they've got them at Surrey. So before you go off and spend half a million quid on, on, on an independent consultant, do look around the transport authorities. I, it's, it's my experience, Councillor Miller, thank you. And TFL also have people. Uh, Councillor Cousins. Thank you, Chair. I fear this will also be a fourth written answer. Um, page 116 of 118 and the section 106 commuted sums. Um, there are some quite big increases of 24.2%, 22.2%, 20%. 20%. Um, have we undertaken any assessment as to if we're increasing the section 106 fees at this rate? developers may decide to retain uh, pieces of land rather than hand them over to us as the authority and then charge residents again. And I mean charge in terms of management fees on top of their council tax. And it's not a new issue, this councillor, is it? And, um, it um, 
it, it, it certainly needs looking at. I think, I think we, we can probably resolve the issue if we're selling the land to a developer because we can put a condition of sale on that they uh, will pay the commuter charge and, and not, 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 rather than not. Um, but if, if we are not selling the land that's owned by somebody else, then, then we do have a problem because you can't put it in as a condition of planning. That, that said, um, most developers can look favourably on us when they realise what it means to get a service company in. Okay, just to confirm here uh, that um, there, there, there is um, that, that, that these in, these proposed increases are um, reflect the uh, the the costs that are likely to be incurred over time um, of um, maintaining areas that uh, f for which this Section 106 money is being paid for initially, and also reflects the fact that, of course, that. Um, we're earning less money on that, we're earning less interest on that money, and so therefore if we, 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 have to, we have to charge a higher initial sum because we, we, we can't anticipate earning as much over the period of the life of the, uh, of the, of the, of the responsibility. Thank you. Uh, Councillor Faulkner. Well, thank you, Chair. Yeah, just to take this back up to a more uh, a holistic view. Um, I've been a councillor now for 18 months, 19 months, and, it, and on the various committees I sit on f to do with finance, it reminds me of, a, of something a, a senior business executive said to me when he was opening up a, an operation in China. He says, when you arrive, you realise you know nothing. After one week, you think, hmm, I'm starting to get a grip. After one month, you think, yeah, I'm really starting to understand this. And after one year, you realize you know nothing. And uh, you know, when you plow through this, it's reminded me of that. But it's a bit like a pack of cards. Um, the danger is when you pull one little piece out, the whole model comes tumbling down. So it's a bit like having to say, this is a robust document which we need to accept. And, uh, Councillor Isaac mentioned that we're fortunate to have a, a very well proven set of officers uh, that have produced this. I, I would hesitate to say we have an immaculate cabinet behind it all producing it. But it does remind me. <coughs> I will do it. Um, I won't mention this unitary authority, but reading the Newcle Newbury Weekly News, um, in their case, um, there's this panic article. So they're not quite sure whether they're cut to 10 million, 15 million, 18 million, and they suddenly all their plans, etc., are blown to pieces, and they don't know what they're going to cut. But the cuts look pretty desperate all over, and I guess they're not alone in being in this rather difficult position. So I suppose uh, building up to the question that I actually have is, um, as, as Councillor Keating pointed out virtually everything that went up on the screen is subject to a very high extreme level of risk. There's very little actually under our control. So my, my question is, do, do we have a risk management model or, or, or process where when one f wheel unexpectedly comes falling off or is ripped off from us, we then can uh, respond reasonably quickly to know what that's going to do to us and how that's going to affect uh, the business model that we've got uh, in front of us. Councillor Isaac, can you answer that? I can do, but I think it would be better um, um, if uh, the officer answered that because um, oh, no. he's... Um, no, I don't agree. This is not, not an officer's question. So you're, you must answer that. Okay. Well, it, that's fine. Okay. Uh, as a council, uh, we... Um, uh, ha have to meet um, various statutory requirements in relation to um, regulations and the, 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 this means that in any budget we have to assess the uh, key risks and those, uh, those include the impact of slow recovery in the economy, um, legislative changes to local authority funding, 
uh, and other risks such as efficiencies, savings and incomes targets not met, unplanned expenditure requirements, expenditure not contained with approved budgets. Um, I think our track record is 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 one that's pretty good, and and uh, I, I and uh, I, I do um, uh, sympathise with with the predicament that. Um, uh, that West Barks Council finds itself in, but um, we we have um, uh, we we we've I think uh, assessed the risk um, pretty well, um, and uh, what I'm reporting to you tonight, following the announcements by the minister in December, um, do not uh, represent um, they represent um, uh, uh, significant challenges, but not not of the sort of uh, proportions that they're they're, they're now talking about at uh, West Barks. Um, so um, I think we've got a very firm handle on risks. Um, I think there's a um, uh, somewhere though, there's the there's a there's a um, uh, the the uh, individual risks are are itemised and and corporate risk register and and shows what the effect of 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 of, uh, of movement would be. In, in thank you, Councillor Miller. Uh, if, if interest rates, rates um, um, uh, moved out uh, by 1% um, and what the effect would be on our, our overall finances. So I think we, I can, it, it, is, it is the most testing time for local government in terms of financial management for many, many years. But I think that um, we are um, well equipped here. In, 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 a, in, able to, in, in terms of the robustness of our overall finances and our ability to manage those risks. And we have some specific risk reserves, lots of them. Thank you. Uh, Councillor Keating. Thank you, Chair. Uh, I'd just like to follow up on that because we're not comparing like with like here. This is a district council. The Berkshire authority that you're talking about is the equivalent of a unit three authority or a county council in our words, right? So they have totally different levels of responsibility and more of them, and they have more legal requirements to provide those services that we don't. The, the number of responsibilities legally that we, the Borough Council, have to provide is actually quite a short list. And it's made up of, one, collect the rubbish from every house. Doesn't say how, doesn't say how often, or whatever, but that's one legal responsibility. We don't have other significant responsibilities, like, for instance, social care, or care for the elderly, which is actually a huge cost ever-increasing cost, and there is no obligation on government to finance it. And they're withdrawing, they're withdrawing by cutting the county council's budget approvals, they're withdrawing from funding that, which is causing county councils to be looking over the edge, and some of them are suggesting they're going to go bust. So we, it's, it's a different level of risk. We're richer as a borough, then lots of those county councils or unitary authorities. But uh, we're only protected by being a borough council. If we foolishly jump into the, a different pool with all those other county councils, right, Southampton, Portsmouth, uh, Winchester, Isle of Wight, we'll be jumping into a pool where they're all going bust but we're the only one that's not. And that's what happens if you jump into a pool without assessing the cost risks first. Thank you. you want to respond, Councillor Adler? Yes, I will. Uh, Councillor Keating is right. Uh, uh, West Barks is, is a unitary authority with dist district council. I think the point I was trying to make was, however, that um, in, in reference to the local government changes announced uh, in, in December, um, the, 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 I think that um, we had perhaps assessed um, what the, the risks were uh, likely to be um, uh, for, uh, for us, and, 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 and I think we cover those pretty well, actually. And the other point you make is, quite, is, is absolutely right, and, 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 and does 
uh, mark that the, the huge difference between us and, and West Barks and a lot of other councils is that uh, we, are, we are nowhere near as dependent upon um, central government uh, grants, revenue support grants. Um, uh, 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 in fact, um, you know, our revenue support, support grant represents something in the order of 7% or thereabouts of... Uh, uh, 7% of our total revenues. So it, it is, and that's why we are in a, in a fortunate position, and long may it continue, to, to manage the finances of this council as well as we do in trying circumstances. Thank you. Councillor Tilbury. Oh, yes. Uh, back to page 116 of 118. This issue of the commuted sums. Well, I was actually the councillor that raised this two years ago, and it came up in Foxdown, and it came up with those issues in Buckskin and Old Kempshot Lane. And ironically, we've got the same thing going on in Overton now, where the other large event that was built at that time, the original Overton, there was about 100 houses, massive area of open space. The developer took it on, or passed it over to us, gave, paid the commuted sums, no problem there. So the people who live in that part of the estate don't pay anything. They got planning permission to build another 120 houses with a different developer at the other end of the estate. Little or no green space in there, but they want to put, and they want to have a different road layout, this, which Hampshire was saying they won't adopt. So they say, we'll have a management company to run all this and to cut the very small area of grass. And they said, oh, well, don't worry about it, because it'll only be about 200 to 250 pounds per house, which makes our council tax look pretty cheap in comparison, doesn't it? But the point is, I said to him, well, well um, do you realise how this works? He said, well, I assume it's done on a pro rate on, on the side of the house. I said, no, it's a flat rate charge to everyone. I said, so the people in the poorest, the cheapest houses, the affordable housing, actually pay more, because not only do they pay the management fee charge, they then have to pay their housing association cost of, of um, administering the charge. So the poorest people pay the most money. And they weren't even aware of this because they just see this as an easy option, management charges, to offload the problem and to avoid paying a f these commuted sums. But the obvious question looking at these figures here is it just says grass cut with cylinder 13 cuts per year. No mention of the area. You know, it's just for, it assumes, you know, and £41,000 were we actually, I'm actually chairman of the parish council in Overton, we cut the grass in Overton, well, we get it cut, we get Tess Valley to cut it because Basingstoke and Dean are too expensive. <laughs> <laughs> Which is quite, and, but the point is, it's about £3,000 a year to cut all our play parks. Now, they're massive areas of grass, and they come along and they park their van outside my house every few months and do a pretty good job of it, but they're doing that, so this is the equivalent of about... 15 years worth of costs which were front loading onto someone which really would be better if we were to recover this through the council tax which wouldn't actually make a massive impact instead we're going to end up landing the people who buy these houses on the new estate in Overton with a charge of 200 to, to, to 250 pounds per year well I think they know what they prefer I think they're worried about a small increase in the council tax it's a massive these one-off charge and the trouble is this is starting to this is creeping across the borough it's creeping across the country because developers see this as an easy way out of avoiding paying for these you know upfront costs there but that we're not helping if we increase them by massive amounts and that was a point I made two years ago and we've increased them twice since then so we're not helping the situation we're not helping the future residents we're actually making the houses more unaffordable you know for a short-term gain thank you thank you councillor that's right it Thank you, thank you, Councillor Tilbury. Uh, Tilbury, um, you you have aired this uh, point and on, uh, in full council, and, and I uh, I think um, you've had responses from uh, uh, the, the cabinet member for for, for planning on this. Um, but I suppose that my my response here would be that um, I, I think it's it would be a bit harsh to impose um, a, a council tax, uh, an additional council tax on on everyone, um, just for the benefit of. Uh, the, 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 these few residents that that that, that um, have got this particular issue, um, you can't you can't have a sort of one council tax for them and a council and a different council tax for the rest of us. So I don't really see that um, this is. Yes, well, they're they're they're, they're, <laughs> they're, 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 they're I imagine those that, that those those that's that's long established and it's, it's part of the pub pub. It, there's sort of public ownership of those of that uh, section of land. This is this is this is different here. This is different here. I think. Okay, I haven't got anybody else wishing to speak. We're required to comment on this document. We're not required to debate it or 
um, come to any other conclusion. So are there any more questions from any member? Mr. Council Cousins? Just one final one, Chair. Um, page 109 of 118 and the bulky waste charges, uh, specifically the 10% increase in bulky waste collections that are due next year. Again, have we done any studies to show that that's a fair increase? As I recall, you had a, we, 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 we were, um, uh, you had a very full answer on, on that um, when we last met, um, because we happened to have the cabinet member responsible for um, waste, um, who happened to be in the building at the time. So. Um, um, she, she is the expert on that. I've got nothing to add. Okay, uh, Councillor Keating. Well, being as you used the slide this, this evening to say a general 1% increase in, in, in charges when this is a 10% increase, that's totally misleading. If you're paying bulky household waste charges, the increase is 10%. And there's no one saying, oh, well, that overall means 1%. Because if you have to buy those services, you have to pay a 10% increase. And I think that's disgraceful. And thanks for your contribution. Okay. Uh, yes, Councillor Isaac, certainly. Okay, I uh, acknowledge the points you make, Councillor, but, but, but I'm accurate in saying that the average overall cost in, in, increase in charges is, 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 uh, is at the 1% um, uh, rate. It's only, it's only half of 1% if you go national. Yeah, okay, uh, Councillor Smith. Uh, <coughs> thank you, Chair. I, I suppose you asked for comment, um, and I, I thought I'd make one. Um, I think. I didn't ask, I said that well. I was supposed to do. <laughs> That's good enough as far as I'm concerned. Um, I think what, what's come out in most of our discussion tonight is the fact that local government's in a, in a difficult position where things are going to change. Um, I personally take a view that that change is potentially the right one um, uh, and what part we play as an authority in that change and whether that means a, a Greater Hampshire or not is, is part of the discussion we have. Um, what I think this... What I think this budget does is sets us in a as good a position uh, at this point uh, as we can be, um, accepting completely that we don't know where we're going to be in two or three years' time. We don't know what's going to come forward. Um, and, and Kevin's often famed, particularly within the council, for his tendency to put money into pots. Uh, uh, and I think you know that process is bearing fruit in the fact that we've not just kept council tax down over the last five years, but managed to put that money away. Um, for the roof while the sun's shining uh, is right. Um, so I'd like to commend both Kevin and uh, the finance team, including the portfolio holder, for that. Um, it, it is a difficult budget, of course it is, and I, I never like to see a council tax increase personally, but I understand that we're looking and facing a structural deficit, um, and we're facing a completely different change in local government, and this budget reflects that. Thank you. Um Anybody else wish to comment? Yes, Councillor Tilbury. Oh, just briefly, yeah, I just agree with very much what Joe said, but just, I mean, uh, Paul made the point earlier, but I mean, when I first joined this council in 2002, I think we were getting about uh, £10 million a year in interest net at that point, thereabouts, you know, in, from our investments there, and then we're getting, what, about £2 million now, and I think that's, you know, we're in a bit of a perfect storm. We've got the government taking money for, uh, away from us, and obviously we're not getting money from those investments, but, you know, at least we do we still have money coming in from him. We're in a better situation than a lot of other counties who are, they really are at the creek, aren't they? It's, yeah, so I would think, you know, it's making the best of a bad, bad job, really, and I think that's all we can do. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, does anybody else want to comment on the nature of this d document? No? Thank you all very much. Uh, it is a difficult thing to do every year. Um, I think we cover most things, but we must not remember, we must not forget, rather, that there are people in this borough who desperately need our help, and Let's hope there's enough money in here to do that. Thank you all and good night.